How's it going? David Begg here with Inbox Attack. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, domain warming. Uh, so the first thing you're going to want to do when you're starting uh, a new cold email outreach or if you're new to it is to grab not one, not two, but maybe even three new domains. So to give you an example, my primary domain is inboxattack.com. Uh, we do not want to use this for cold outreach because then it puts my domain and my email reputation at risk uh, for being marked as spam. And what's going to happen in the long term is I might send emails out to potential clients or even my teammates and it might land in the spam filter. Uh, so we just want to avoid that entirely. And that's exactly why we recommend getting new domains. Um, so you're going to want to purchase a couple separate ones. Uh, let's keep it consistent. Uh, we want them to look similar enough um, so that they're not radically different. Uh, so a few examples I have here are getinboxattack.com or reachinboxattack.com. Uh, so that way, everyone can still tell I'm associated with the same uh, the same company, um, but they're entirely different domains, right? Uh, you want to avoid using a dash also. Uh, this can lead to deliverability issues down the line because it's uh, commonly used in phishing attempts. Uh, for the example you see there is inbox-attack.com. Uh, so the next step after I have, you know, two or three new domains, I'm going to need to warm them up. So what does this mean? Um, so typically, uh, a brand new domain that's under a month old will be treated differently by email service providers. Uh, this is because uh, it's been a, uh, a long-standing practice from spammers to just burn a domain and buy a new one and get right back on the horse and keep emailing. Uh, so for that reason, we have to be cautious when we buy a new domain that we let it sit for a while um, or at least warm it up very slowly over uh, the 30 days. Um, now, Mailshake recommends waiting at least 12 weeks until you're ready to uh, go full speed into the outreach. And I agree with that as well. Um, but just know you can start the outreach after the 30 days. Uh, just go very, very slowly. Um, so now we're going to talk about just how we warm these up, right? So when I say warm them up, uh, I'm meaning get some engagement going, right? This means sending emails, receiving emails, um, etc. Uh, so we want to show uh, your email service provider that you're a real human and you're using this email address to do what they want you to do, right? So that means sending emails to your friends, signing up for social media, receiving newsletters. Um, so there are a few, a few good ways to actually get that engagement going. Um, so like I mentioned here, signing up for tons of different newsletters is great because they'll be sending stuff to your inbox, right? Getting stuff going. Uh, social media is great too. You can turn all your alerts on. Uh, so that way you're getting updated every time something happens, uh, which for some of you could be a whole lot, which is great. Um, second step is to email your friends or you know, if you don't have many friends who have email, uh, you can get a couple of email addresses that you own and essentially just talk to yourself. Um, so you want emails going back, back and forth between you, people you know, yourself, whoever that may be, we just want emails coming in and out. And that's, that's the gist of it, right? Um, so during this warming period, you're going to want to make sure that uh, you're just sending and receiving emails. Uh, ultimately, this shows your email service provider that you're sending stuff that people want to see and they're responding to versus, you know, spam emails that you might get one or two responses out of thousands of emails. So the last thing I want to talk about is what we like to call cycling the crops because you have a couple of different domains. You might have a couple of different crops as we'd like to call them. Um, so the biggest thing here is to know when to pivot, right? So you might use one domain for a month, two months, three months. Ultimately, you'd like to use the one domain for the entirety of your outreach. That's the goal. Um, I live in the real world though, so I understand that that's not always possible. Um, so eventually you might hit some issues with deliverability. Uh, and this can be caused by people marking you as spam or just overall low engagement, uh, causing your reputation score to drop. Um, but the easiest way to tell if that's happened is to keep an eye on your open rates. So if you look at the diagram I made here, you'll see that after uh, May 26th, um, we had a huge drop in open rates. So we were sitting at about uh, upwards of 50%, which was great, pretty consistently. We even raised the volume, but you'll notice on May 27th, uh, those numbers dropped drastically. And it wasn't just for a day or two days or three days. It looked to be about a week. Um, this is all to the same list. It was all from the same account. 
and it was all the exact same email copy. Uh, so this tells me um, they were having a big issue here. So when something like this happens, it's a good idea to switch up the email domain you're sending from and let the original domain sit. Um, typically, I'll let the original domain sit for about three to four weeks, um, run another test, try it again. Uh, and typically the reputation resets. Um, so don't worry, uh, you know, if you do have an issue like this, it's not permanent, um, but you do need to just let things rest for a while and let them reset. So hope you found this video useful uh, and you'll be hearing more from us soon.